Welcome back. It's time for the very first hot topic on the program this morning. I want to take a look at the economic realities of the President Muhammadu Buhari's administration. And uh, we want to know how well this administration have matched words with actions since 2015 when they came on board. And we have been joined by Mr. Frank Elanya, Technology and Media News Editor at Business Day. Ms. Elanya, good morning. Thanks for having me on the show, on the show this morning. Okay, you're welcome. Um, as I said earlier, before you joined us, if you want to judge someone's actions, you probably should best start at his words. What promises did he make to you before you say, oh, he failed me? And so we're going to take a look at an excerpt from uh, the inaugural speech of President Muhammad Buhari in 2015. And uh, you probably want to listen to it. Here we have it. Quote, at home we face enormous challenges, insecurity, pervasive corruption, the hitherto unending and seemingly impossible fuel and power shortages are the immediate concerns. We are going to tackle them head on. Nigerians will not regret that they have entrusted national responsibility to us. We must not succumb to hopelessness and defeatism. We can fix our problems. Mm. That's quoting President Muhammad Buhari, the outgoing president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You are of the Business Day newspaper, and I'm very much aware that your paper has done a lot of investigations and reportage on this administration. Has this government, yeah. from your findings, been able to fix our economic problems? Yeah. Uh, um so importantly, that last sentence, uh, which is uh, we, we, we will fix our problems. What we have found uh, is that um, the present or the outgoing administration, because uh, by May, uh, this administration will be done. The outgoing administration um, had a lot they promised. There was a 1.8 million uh, jobs they promised to create. Um, there was um, several other promises that were made uh, um, about fighting corruption, about uh, um, uh, um, creating energy, um, about 10,000 megawatts of uh, energy that was promised. That was uh, the reduction of uh, the exchange rate um, that the administration also promised. But um, by May, we would have had a lot of failed promises. Um, one of the things that this administration like to talk about is how they fixed the uh, infrastructure, uh, which was also one of the promises that they made. But um, we have seen how, how they did that um, with a lot of loans, uh, um, with a lot of uh, uh, or living um, generations of Nigerians that are yet to come in, in deep debt. Um, we've got about uh, um, close to about seven, seven trillion uh, Naira uh, um, debt um, waiting for us right now. And uh, we've got uh, several other... Uh, okay, so let's talk about... Um, um, jobs, for instance, um, we have 33.3% uh, unemployment rate uh, um, going on for us. And then just just yesterday, um, we had the MBS now review how they measure unemployment to say that uh, if you have worked only one hour um, in a week, I think, I think that's what I said, in a week, um, that you are employed, which I think is very ridiculous. Um, in, in this time, because that will now mean that anybody, if you just sit at home and work for one hour, it means that you are employed. So whatever work that you have means that uh, um, this administration is claiming that they have created a lot of jobs. So the thing is that um, the present administration had a lot riding for them. First of all, they came in on a wave of uh, support because uh, the, um, the Jonathan administration didn't do quite well. And then they wrote on that promise that they were going to do a lot of stuff and then coming in you were expecting okay by this time a lot of things would have happened um they had a lot of money money was not a problem they had a lot of uh, um resources we was there for them to um to do a lot with they had um a, a lot of support that they could have used but we saw that at the end of the day um, nothing was done from um, let's look at the side of education for instance um, 
ASU has had the longest strike that that we can think about in the period of um, President Muhammad Buhari. Um, we had several of them. It, it was becoming a, a thing of almost like every quarter, ASU will go on strike. Um, last year, we had the longest um, strike from uh, ASU, you know, and we, we can assure that that problem has not been dealt with. And then in the telecom industry, for instance, um, now telecom operators now have to pay about 42 taxes. Some of the uh, things that the president uh, administration did was to give us, uh, say, um, the financial bill. But the financial bill didn't actually address anything. What it only did was to create more taxes. So every time that there was a, a financial bill, your industry operators only expect, oh, taxes are going to go up. But then you, you're asking yourself, what exactly are they using these taxes for? And you don't see what exactly is being used for. So um, there was a lot that was riding on this administration. They could have taken advantage of. They had a lot of promise. They had a lot of goodwill from the people. But I think that at the end of the day, they misused it and they didn't deliver the promises that they made. Okay, but um, we also have a report from uh, an auditing tax and advisory services firm, KPMG, which says unemployment rate, poverty rate, uh, will hit 40.6% this year. Uh, this administration is going, but they are also sharing this year. And whatever that figure will become is also part of what has happened in the last eight years. So what are your comments? on these findings by KPMG? Yeah, so it's absolutely spot on. I, I think the next administration as an incoming president will have a lot of job to do cleaning up. It's like um, you're coming into a house with a lot of uh, mess inside it. Um, usually what will happen is that when you're moving into a house, it's like empty and uh, you're just, all you just go there to do is just you clean up, uh, uh, maybe just wash a little bit and bring your furniture and you continue to leave. But this time around is as if you're going into a house that's dilapidated. So you um, ultimately may need to um, rebuild from the start. That is what the um, administration of uh, uh, our Aquari has done so far. And jobs have become a thing of uh, um, a rarity um, in the polity. And it's, it's not going to look well for the next administration. So. I'm thinking that with 40% um, um, unemployment rates looking at us, the priority of the net administration should be to how do you create how do you create um, jobs with low hanging fruits? What are the things that you can do immediately to um, to to get Nigerians back to work because people need to work and because also they face a lot of uh, issues that. Uh, you can't even start to imagine. There's a lot that people are, are facing. Um, think about the cash crunch that people are also facing um, currently. Um, it, it hasn't gone away, and which is also what impacted the GDP um, report that came out this week, uh, bringing it down to 2.3%. Uh, and I think it would have been worse, um, if you ask me, probably some, somewhere around 1.9%. Um, percent that's where you, it should be but um, the NBS set is a uh, 2.3 percent and we've also seen that that has reflected in the MPR that uh, the um, the MPC re released which has now taken our interest rates up up to where it's not supposed to be and that doesn't look good for businesses you know um, because it means that you don't have funds or if you're going to borrow any money right now you have to pay a lot more to do that what that also means is that you won't have the capacity to create more jobs because if you're paying a, a lot more interest rate means that you have to be careful about the money that you're going to borrow which also means that people are not going to get more jobs or are going to see more employment created um i think what what the next administration should be thinking about is how do you make more people want to create the jobs how do you make the environment a lot easier for people businesses want to try but um, they're not seeing that uh, um, opportunity. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me cut you here so that um, I can get something straight from you. Um, this administration, you said, is leaving Nigeria like a dilapidated uh, structure. And the next administration has to come up and start to uh, rebuild and all that. But when this administration was demolishing, so to speak, the country, 
uh, or before they started that, the incoming administration was said to be there with the bulldozers. They provided the, the fuel, they provided everything for this administration to do what they were doing because they were there at the campaigns. They were there at the yeah. drawing board uh, deciding what to do with Nigeria. So are you seeing a branch off from what this administration has done? Uh, because it seems as if what the next administration is talking about is continuing whatever this administration has done. Do you think there's going to be a breakaway at all? I, I think that continuing where Buhari has stopped will be um, the biggest tragedy that the next administration will have because where he stopped is an absolute mess. So um, you need to veer off completely from where he stopped. I, I mean, just um, reject things um, from the beginning. Um, first of all is that the Buhari administration didn't have a good team. Okay, so whoever the next administration is going to employ uh, to be a minister, uh, uh, to be ministers, will be very important. I think this is the time not to think about politics, um, where somebody is coming from, or how much uh, somebody contributed to your campaign. I think this is time to think about how do you bring in technocrats to help you rebuild this dilapidated structure called Nigeria. You know, um, if, if you're still thinking about, oh, I'm going to uh, continue where these guys stopped and all that, you are making the biggest mistake. And that's a, a recipe for me for failure uh, from day one, which means I'm not going to expect anything from you. Um, what is there to continue with? Um, is, it, is it the depths, which means you're saying you're, you're going to continue borrowing? First of all, we need to start to think about how do we start production? How do we revive our production lines? The PMI are down, as in all-time all time low. So um, production needs to be a priority for the next administration. Um, Buhari's administration did not prioritize it. It, 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 it uh, focused more on politics, how do you survive and get yourself to, um, um, to, to the end of the line. Instead of prioritizing, how do you um, build and improve the welfare of Nigerians? He didn't do that. So the next administration, the rhetoric should desist from thinking, how do I continue to how do I uh, um, make things better for the ordinary Nigerians? Because at the end of the day, it is what the street says that happens. It is what the street, uh, it is a feeling on the street that you used to judge how good you have performed and not um, how your friends uh, or how your politicians are feeling. You okay. know, so this is a time for we not to think about who contributed the most to my campaign, but to who is going to help me rebuild this structure and make it a sustainable structure. First of all, we need to start thinking about how do we put, as in generate revenue from within before we start thinking about, uh, and, and then how do we start paying off some of the debts that we have? Um, everybody's celebrating uh, right, um, um, Dangote Refinery, but it's a shame uh, actually for me, for this administration, that over a period, as in one person was able to build um, a refinery from scratch over a period of seven years, but then it has taken us about donkey years, many years, to to just revive four refineries that we already have, and we've collected a lot of good loans for that thing. Every year we keep budgeting for those refineries, but then at the end of the day, nothing is done. I'm, I, I'm told this year that uh, yeah, there have been a lot of. Uh, um, uh, revamping, a lot of things are happening at the refineries and all that. If it's not functioning, it's not functioning. We hear these stories every year. So it, it, what we need to start thinking about is how do we um, boost production? How do we start generating revenue from within? And then reduce the idea of going abroad to, to collect loans because we are not having it easy right now. All right, Frank, um, the prevailing economic reality is on ground affirming all of that, all that you're saying. Nigerians are crying. Uh, the massive uh, development challenges uh, are still very, very prevalent, as you are saying and as we can see. Let, let's look at, you've mentioned one or two of the reasons why this administration has not performed well. Let's look at why this administration has failed as much as it has, or as much as you have said it has failed, even though it came on board with all these promises to fix all of our problems. What are some of these mistakes that this administration made that you would say made it 
unable to diversify this economy as it should have to reduce dependence on oil for export and revenue and you know, build strong institutions that could have changed the game for the nation? I think uh, um, number one was the, um, the choice or the delay in uh, selecting a team. That's number one. Okay, so um, Buhari spent more time um, thinking about politics than he, uh, than he should have in trying to think about who was going to be part of his team. So it took him about six months um, when he was elected in 2015 to announce the ministers. And that, for me, was um, the beginning of his failure as a president. All right? Um, if, if, um, he, he, he made us a lot of promises, um, pointing out some of the mistakes of the Jonathan administration. And one would have been thought that uh, before he had even been declared as the president, that he had already started assembling the team that was going to help him um, correct some of the things that he pointed out. But it took him six months for him to announce his ministers, and that was not good enough. And when he eventually did, we saw that um, practically uh, about 80% of them were not fit for use. You know, So we had a minister of education who was uh, almost uh, um, not... Not a, not an action for um, throughout the eight years. Um, if you talk about ASU today, what you talk about is uh, Chris Ngige, who has been negotiating with ASU. But Adamu Adamu, for instance, have not really itemized what his vision is for the education um, uh, for, for education. Um, we talk about um, the Minister of Commerce. I don't know who that is. I mean, till now, I, I can pinpoint to um, what the name was. You know, we talk about the Minister of uh, Te um, Science and Technology. The person was in Tomlicado all through the eight years. So, first of all, is who are the people that make up the team? Or who are the people that are going to make up the team of the president? So, you, it, it is something that needs to be carefully thought out. Okay. Nigeria does not need politics. We'll let the politics end after you are declared president. After that, work starts immediately. We should start seeing a situation where when you are declared president, in the next week, you are already announcing who your ministers are. There should be an appointment. There should be something happening already. Because there's no time for you to even wait. Oh, um, we live in a world today where... You, you don't think about saying I am I'm playing second fiddle because those who are ahead of you are not waiting for you. Hmm. They are already moving forward. While you're trying to catch up, they've already moved like 10 steps ahead of you. So it is important that we think about who the teams are. And then beyond what who the teams are is what are they bringing to the table? Every minister for me should have a vision for the ministry and they should be allowed to work. I think we should devolve ourselves from this situation where ministers have to, first of all, go and seek an approval from the president before they work. It doesn't help. Because when they get to Abuja, the bureaucracy sets in, and there's a chief of staff that they have to go through, which was the issue that we had with uh, the um, Kiari um, um, issues, ministers complaining that they couldn't get to the president and get things done on time, all right? So there should be a system that allows them to get the approvals done. And the vision should be itemized. And there should be a monthly review of what you're doing as a minister. Let's let the president have a retreat with them every quarter to say, what have you achieved? And he should be ready to fire. If you've okay. not done anything, there should be no reason you should continue as a minister. All right. Thank Which you, Frank. Yeah. Thank you, Frank and Leanya. Uh, for your time, you. uh, we will not be able to continue this discussion with you. But we will continue uh, this assessment as we move to the second hot topic. But thanks so much, Frank Elianya, Thank you for, for your me. time with us. Frank Elianya is Technology and Media News Editor at Business Day. Mm. Stay with us. We'll be back with our second hot topic.